All right, hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm gonna give you a test server overview of what's coming, the state it's in, bugs, etc. Now, DE gave me everything in the update, as well as a thousand platinum in order to test these items. The server also had double XP running during the time the server was up, and I spent a total of 30 hours on the test server. This video might be longer than my usual video, so I'm going to provide timestamps to everything. I did run into some technical issues on the second day, as I couldn't log in. I thought the servers were full or something, and I tried uninstalling or reinstalling, only to learn that I didn't need to do that. All I had to do was start the regular game once, and then I could log into the test server. I feel bad for the people that didn't figure that out on the first day and lost their access to the test server as a result. First, we're going to go over some minor bugs and changes. So first off, the Simulacrum UI breaks very often where you have to Alt F4 in order to play the game again. The Orbiter looks cleaner, but if you have a lot of Noggles, you're going to have a bad time with the Duplicate Shadows. Nora Knight has been deemed so annoying that she now has her own volume slider, but it does not work on the radio inside your Orbiter. Necromex now have Shield Gating. Sometimes you can spawn in the Void in Sanctuary Onslaught. Agara Skin exists but the collection screen is broken. Lloyd has a sentinel skin and accessories. He is not his own sentinel. The infested dog and cat have new augments, but I don't have either pets, so I couldn't test them. And lastly, DE has made no effort to change, nerf, or adjust energy regen on Hildren, meaning that it's intended or they deemed it balanced. You can watch the full video to find out more about that. Glaives are broken OP and I don't expect them to ship in this state during the final release. The Garuda augment turns her into a Nova alternative, taking away the need to aim or charge her for, which makes her easier to play. The other bonus, however, isn't that strong. When it says plus 100% combo chance, they mean plus one combo per hit, which isn't very useful. Also, Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds work properly on Garuda's Talons again. My biggest criticism is the base range is a tad low, mainly because it's pretty hard to build range on a Warframe that also wants more than 125% power strength. 10 meters would be a nice starting point. Mott Crash, while it works, it has no duration scaling at all, so it only lasts 3 seconds and there's nothing you can do to change that not great. The Breach Surg Augment caps its crit chance at 35 meters base. Power strength should affect the distance needed to cap out the crit chance, but the crit chance is multiplicative and it's only for snipers. You can make this work with a little setup paired with something like a Toxic Elemental Ward and a Speed Mode, but it's not something you're going to use in your day-to-day -day mission. Revenant's new Augment works. Nothing stands out about it. Could be good for Kuvaliches though. Now, onto the Warframe changes. The Ash Bladestorm change got a lot of people worried that Bladestorm would cost more energy, but it actually costs less. The energy cost is now exactly the same as a single mark on the current live build. So if you're running Prime Flow on your Bladestorm build, you don't need it anymore. The Zephyr Tornado change is as good as you'd expect. Though for single targets, getting the high ground is recommended, otherwise the tornadoes will block your shot. The Air Burst change, however, might as well not exist. Chroma change is nice. It would be better if Elemental Ward was recastable though. Also, Chroma spreads his wings when bullet jumping, but only in combat zones. The Nidus change, it's a thing that exists. It's nice, but it's not strong enough to matter. The Zaku changes probably won't convince you to use Zaku, but the range increase on Gaze is noticeable. When it comes to the new kick guns, the name of the game seems to be large AoE slash auto aim, but extremely low damage and ammo. It was really painful using these, but if you're gonna use them, I'd highly recommend maximizing the base damage and ammo mutation is a must. Packed charge, even with a low ammo loader, gives you a really long recharge time. Eventually, I did give up forming these completely since I was so pressed for time. The kick gun arcanes have no visuals, and it's very hard to notice the effects. They are also supposed to give extra revives, but they don't. Maybe they don't stack with the Warframe arcanes. As far as the Warframe arcanes go, they also don't have visuals, and as far as I can tell, they don't work at all. Now let's talk about the new weapons. The one I'm excited for the most is the new Sniper, that's a slash based status sniper that fires projectiles and has similar stats to the new core. It only has one zoom level that gives extra headshot damage and the zoom is rather low so it's 
more akin to something like a battle rifle. Despite the stats, the sniper is very good and does extremely high damage to armor targets without mods. The bolts also have a delayed explosion, but the explosion is just icing on the cake. It doesn't do much damage anyways. The only downside is the sniper bolts actually have bullet drop, but you'll only notice this at longer ranges. We have yet another Cernos in the game. Basically, this one is a status Brahma, but it has higher base damage to compensate for the lack of crit, and it's slash based with the explosion dealing pure viral damage. It's also silent for some reason. When you shoot it, it groups targets in, then explodes, and if you hit a target directly, they're stunned. The damage is not amazing, but it would be better if there was slash in the explosion. Also only has seven shots and no built-in ammo mutation, and it's in the longbow archetype of bow, so you can only fire it when fully charged, but you can hold it forever, which is probably a bug. I really wish this was in the compound bow archetype, and the Vortex lasted a little bit longer so you can spam them out without charging them. It would make a great alternative to the Ferox and Endurance runs. Also deals with nullifiers extremely quickly and can damage the nullifiers even inside their bubble. The TDR ripoff beam weapon that's called the Catabolist is a solid beam weapon with high base damage for a beam weapon and decent crit, but the reloads are not automatic. You have to press the fire button again to reload the weapon. There is also a bug where dodging while reloading will give you another grenade, but the explosion from the bud grenade is much weaker than the real thing, with a smaller blast radius and no mods applied. The new arm cannon is a shotgun that fires grenades on the alt fire, but the model is way too big and can cover what you're shooting even if you're not aiming down sights, which makes the alt fire completely impractical. It does solid damage though. The new nunchucks make a great stat stick, especially for someone like Atlas, so you can run corrosive viral on his fists while also benefiting from the nine second combo duration base. Animation work isn't finished yet and the hitboxes are jank, so you need to use the gap closer if you wanna deal good damage with this weapon. The new Warfan is basically a status version of the Quasis, which is the Warfan from part one of Deimos, as it also shoots projectiles on heavy attack. It does okay damage, but the projectiles do next to nothing. In fact, they are so bad, you're actually better off hitting the enemy directly with an elemental heavy attack build, since this thing has no crit after all. Also, the hitboxes for heavy attacking are noticeably easy to miss if you're trying to hit them directly. The new Necromech has better base stats than the Void Rig, but is effectively worst in class and is nowhere near being finished. The one has a small hitbox for grabbing, but the explosion when you throw them is huge and goes through walls, but it does virtually no damage, making it best at opening containers. I have no idea if the two works or not. Uh, the, sh the shield breaks when it takes enough damage, then it goes on cooldown, but there is no cooldown indicator. The three is only good for the enemy variant of the Necromech in the Isolation Vaults, and the four is the worst arc melee in the game, having lower base damage than the regular Veritux at 300, and it's effective by power strength going up to 390. You trade that lower base damage for 5% more status chance. Necromech pressure point does not affect it either, the only real reason to build this Necromech would be the grenade launcher you get by default as it's amazing ad clear, but at the moment it cannot gain experience. Also no, Necromechs cannot be used in regular missions yet. TLDR, the Necromech is nowhere near being finished and has the exact same XP bugs that the Void Rig used to have, mainly losing all of its XP on death or host migration. The Steel Path now gives you five daily missions that give you three Steel Essence each, and just doing that alone for a week should net you 105 Steel Essence. Speaking of which, Teshin is now selling Umbra Formal Blueprints for 100 Steel Essence. Acolytes drop two Essence per kill, though according to Rebecca, the numbers aren't final. They aren't hard to kill, and they make the stalker noise when they appear and will spawn directly on top of you. They can also spawn multiple times a mission. I was doing Mott with Zephyr and Anx spawned in and was chasing me all over the place and she killed me. Roughly five minutes later, Mania shows up. When they do kill you, they disappear just like stalker. Farming these guys is not recommended as unlike stalker that usually shows up within five minutes, these guys have a 100% spawn rate, but 
can literally show up whenever they feel like, very similar to Corrupt Captain Vor. However, they won't spawn in unless you get a kill. And remember, they spawn in any Steel Path mission. Yes, they spawn in open world zones. And yes, they spawn in Arcwing missions. This is hilarious though, and I hope DE keeps this in, as it actually makes Arcwing the best place to farm them, since Steel Path modifiers are effectively halved in Arcwing. Overall, the biggest problem I have with the Steel Path changes is Teshin's store, and selling Umberforma at a really high price. Umberforma isn't some god item, it's Forma for a prime mod set that isn't even good on every Warframe. It also doesn't help that's the only new thing he's selling. If they're gonna put Umberforma in his shop, then why not built Forma like the old Plague Star? That was the one thing that was missing in the Halloween event that people were disappointed about and made people ignore the event altogether. Otherwise, the rest of the changes are fine, but I expect to see better Steel Essence numbers for Archolites as well as Steel Path Eidolons. The new Isolation bounties, while they do have good drops, mainly the rare Necromech mods that a lot of people gave up farming on and cost hundreds and hundreds of plat on Warframe Market, as well as the new Warfan, they just aren't finished yet. I only really got to experience one tier of the new bounties, but when I actually got tier 2 to work, it gave me an uncompletable bounty. There are multiple different bounties you can get, but for the most part, they are the exact same surface bounties that you'd get just in an isolation vault. By the way, I did the Sarlacc pit puzzle on stream. There is nothing in there except two exits. Don't bother with it. As far as the conservation changes, they weren't really that noticeable other than a few fixes, mainly with the birds spawning. TLDR, Deimos Arcana is a nowhere near a finish date, and if they really want to push this update next week or even this month even, hold back the mech and hold back the bounties. Since I have access to the test server, I also have access to the secret test forums, so I thought I'd share some data about what everybody thought on the test server. Overall, the general consensus on the Warframe changes was positive, but the augments that need a second look are the Garuda and the Wisp augment. While I don't think they need any major changes, I agree. The Gruda Augment needs more base range and should maybe increase base duration of Seeking Talons, but uh, they should remove the second bonus entirely as it isn't useful. The Wisp Augment, while it requires a bit of setup to get working, it's only for snipers that largely don't need crit chance, and the bonus is multiplicative. Maybe the bonus should be additive instead of multiplicative, but if they're going to keep it multiplicative, they should maybe add slash change the bonus to also give the same percent in crit damage as well. As far as the Steel Path changes, the Acolytes were well received, but the feelings on the changes to Steel Essence drops are overall mixed. The new Isolation bounties as well as the rewards were well received when they worked, but most people hated the Necromech. People are most excited for the Arm Cannon and the new Cernos, but they also think the weapons that need buffing the most are the Arm Cannon, the nunchucks, and the new sniper. I'm surprised the new kick guns weren't higher on the list, but I'm going to assume that most people glossed over them, and everybody thought the new arcanes were trash, probably because they didn't work. But yeah, that's the test server in a nutshell, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't posted a video in like two weeks, but that's because there just hasn't been anything to do or anything to motivate me to play Warframe at the moment. And until Deimos Arcana comes out, I'm probably just going to go back to playing Genshin Impact or Minecraft with my Discord server, or Risk of Rain, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyway guys, that's all for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.